Hey guys, it's Aurora with Lavender Hazelwood Witches. Welcome! Yay! Um, so, today I want to talk about the Rose of Jericho. Actually, no. What I want to talk about is the Resurrection Plant. Because, we'll start out with this note. There is something, there's a plant called the Rose of Jericho. And then there's another plant which they call the False Rose of Jericho. Which... I don't know, kind of gives this, the false one a bad reputation. But here's the difference. So the, the original plant has a root that needs to be embedded in soil, whereas the false Rose of Jericho is more like a tumbleweed and does not need to be rooted in soil. The original Rose of Jericho was called such because apparently it was around when Jesus Christ was around. And the original Rose of Jericho existed in Africa, in the Middle East, and um, actually its name is from an old town, I believe, or an old region called Jericho. Apparently there's some lore around how when Jesus died, this plant died, and when Jesus came back to life, this plant came back to life, so it's called the resurrection plant. There's another plant that um, grows in Mexico and in the southern part of the U.S., and it is called the false rose of Jericho, though it is the one that most people use, at least around here. What's the Latin name? It is Selaginella lepida, lepidophila. Lepidophila? Lepidophila? Lepidophila, something like that. <laughs> Once it opens up, it looks like a fern, essentially. The original Rose of Jericho is called, the Latin name is Anastatica aerojuntica. <laughs> so these plants are resurrection plants, and they're called resurrection plants because when they have water, they, they're green and luscious looking, and when there's no water, they dry up and they look dead, but then you add water again, and again, they turn green. So they cycle through this sort of system of dying and coming back to life and dying and coming back to life, and kind of the amazing thing is these plants can live forever. As long as they're not like squashed or broken or torn apart or something, these guys can be passed down from generation to generation. I don't know, that just tickles my fancy a lot. So they're used in a handful of different traditions from like Santeria to Hudu to Yoruba, Catholicism, Wicca, more. <laughs> but these plants are sacred plants and they're, they're considered holy. What's really kind of cool about these plants is, you know, I think all the rage is sort of moon water right now, but you can use the water from a Rose of Jericho as well for the same purposes of moon water. You can use it for protection, you can use it for blessing, you, anywhere that you want to protect, where you want to invite good energy in and give the boot to the bad energy, you can use it for abundance and um, attracting wealth to you as well. You can use it for bringing in love. I'm super attracted to the fact that it dies and comes back to life. I think that is phenomenal. And it reminds me of the phoenix rising from the ashes. I recently did a spell with my Rose of Jericho that I'm not entirely sure has worked yet. Um, it's not that it didn't work necessarily, I think I was hoping for better results than what has come. So either I didn't put enough intention into it, or maybe it was just not strong enough for the intention that I have, which is all totally plausible. And it's gonna require a bit of um, sort of sniffing around and looking at what I was doing and what I could have done better to sort of come to a more concrete conclusion. So what I used it for, my intention was to help Morley, the pooch, the dog, with his skin issues because he has ongoing, he has an ongoing skin infection which really makes him itchy and um, it will not clear up. I mean, he's had it for months. He's been on antibiotics, does not work. And I've pretty much exhausted all possibilities and it's, it's kind of a thorn in our side. So I thought I would help boost positive energy around him and you know bo boost the energy so it's moving up and it's being attractive instead of the energy um, flattening out or diminishing. So I used the Rose of Jericho and attached the vibrancy of the Rose of Jericho opening up and growing 
along with his health improving. Some things did improve, uh, but it wasn't it wasn't the the expectation that I had with it. That, that was my last experiment spell try with it. So once you get your plant, and I will leave a link in the description box of where you can purchase one. I'm holding it. Once you get your plant, do you see it? <laughs> It'll look like a shriveled up brown ball. And the really cool thing is watching it open. So you get a bowl of water, you put the roots in the bowl, and it'll, over the next few hours, just start unfurling and start turning green. You can start this at like the new moon or a moon that's in the waxing phase to help boost the energy and create more, you know, more growth. So what you can do in terms of a spell, if you wanna bring something to you or you wanna grow something, like say abundance or um, you know, the protection of your being or your space. You can try health like I did. Positivity, love, you want to get rid of the negative energy or keep the negative energy out and keep the positive energy in, the love in, close to you. So any of these things you can grow. Um, you can do it with the Rose of Jericho, but why not use the moon to help add an extra layer to it? Like moon water, you can collect the water from your Rose of Jericho. You're going to want to take out the water it's sitting in after a couple days and replace it. So you can use that water. You can use it to spray on uh, thresholds like door jams, window sills. In terms of, of abundance, you can use it to spray on money, on your credit card on, no, actually you don't want to spray it on your credit card. Why did I say that? You know, you could spray it on, um, on your square, <laughs> if you're using a phone, I don't know, cash register if you have one of those. You could put a bowl by the door and then put coins in the water um, as a way to bring in abundance and wealth into your house. You can take like uh, a symbol or a charm, um, for instance, you could use this screw. Once your rose is opened up, you can put it in the center. If like, say the screw represents that you want to be, uh, you want to invite more passion into your life, a lover or something, then you can put this into the middle of your plant and then you can light a candle every day for the you know duration of the waxing phase and, um, and sit by it for 10 minutes, 30 minutes, however long, and meditate or envision, visualize uh, what it is that you wanna to bring to you. Instead of holy water, you can use it in lieu of holy water because it's considered a holy plant. You can use it for whatever base that you're making that you want holy water for. I don't know, Florida water maybe, or um, whatever you're making that needs a charged water. The other thing that you need to do for its sort of care is pull it out. You, you can do it once a week or I've left it longer. Um, so if you wanted to do it for the duration of the waxing moon, that would be two weeks, um, you could. And then pull the roots out of water and let it shrivel up for a couple days and then you can start it all over again. So uh, as an herb, you can take pieces of it and carry it with you to dispel negativity. You can use it to make a tea if you'd like. It is associated with childbirth and easing labor pains. Um, I haven't looked into this specifically. These are the things that I've read about it. I mean, if those properties are correct, then it seems like it has some similar properties to yarrow, but don't take my word for it. Do some research because I haven't really looked very deeply into it. So, so I've had the spider that has come in and inhabited my, my plants um, and has created a mighty web. <laughs> I'm gonna leave her there and see what she does. In terms of totems, spiders are seen as weavers of the destiny. It seems as if she's sending a message about the future and weaving the future and being the creator and the goddess or god of your own destiny. So I wanted to pass on that little message. Anyway, I will see you next time. Have a wonderful day, kids. Mwah.